Oh, hey everyone, how are you doing? Oh, so I want to preface this video by saying I used to have the same opinions as Greta Thunberg when I was about her age. The thing is, though, I've kind of grown out of them, and I realise that every single form of energy has a downside. For example, yeah, this uh, FS6 is actually 23 and a half thousand times more uh, warming than CO2. FS6 is used in nearly every energy grid and is required by renewables to prevent fires. And of course, if you were going to expand the electrical grid, you would have to have a lot more of FS6. I'm simply saying there's no such thing as free energy. I was just watching a few TikTok videos and whatnot of people who support Just Stop Oil. What they do, if you haven't seen them, is they get a placard and they get a bunch of oil-based orange tabards. And they basically go and they block the traffic and this is meant to be some big protest against oil use. And they think the world's going to end in a few years, so they have to go and block the roads to make a point. I'm here because I don't have a future! I'm part of the Just Stop Oil Coalition, demanding an end to all new oil and gas licenses in the UK. What we're asking for is what all the scientists are asking for, what the United Nations are asking for, the international energy. We don't have a livable future if you continue licensing oil and gas for you to listen. So, I just thought as a fun exercise, what would actually happen if we just stopped oil? So I'm imagining the entire world just says, look, we're going to phase out petrochemicals. We're going to do it really, really rapidly. And we don't care about what's going to happen. We're going to stop all oil production because we've got to stop oil. <laughs> Great, let's do it. So the first problem is if you stop oil, a lot of your natural gas goes away too because a lot of the time when you're drilling for oil, uh, natural gas is almost like a byproduct. You know, a lot of your uh, agriculture goes out the window. So as of 2020, agriculture had a final energy demand of 473,000 metric tons of oil equivalent of petroleum products and 84,000 metric tons of oil equivalent worth of natural gas. So, okay, that's pretty massive. Now, all of that's gone, right? You're not going to be able to use your tractors. You're not going to be able to plant crops. And smaller farms, you know, using organic methods, they'll probably be fine. But the problem is transporting the food to the cities is going to be next to impossible so all the cities in the world pretty much are going to be not viable without energy cheap fossil fuels so okay that's i don't know about four five billion people who are probably starving already uh there's going to be mass panics uh, society will break down now people might say well, we need to transition over 30 or 40 years well good freaking luck with that because everything is underpinned by fossil fuels actually 46 percent of food uh, that's consumed in the uk is imported now could we produce more of our food at home yeah probably during the second world war britain certainly had a really good go at feeding itself and i think we did a pretty good job but since then the population's obviously exploded and it isn't such a big deal because we can produce loads of food in other countries and import it pretty cheaply because of fossil fuels. Nevertheless, if you got rid of a lot of cheap oil and the cheap gas, well, you're back to ancient technologies, basically. So no, it's not really possible to feed the UK, let alone the world. Yeah, the UK is not self-sufficient in food production at all. Fresh produce, for example, we import almost half of our vegetables and about 80% of our fruit each year. So not only are we going to be starving, we're going to have very little fruit in the supermarkets. So then it got me interested. Okay, how many tractors are electric? <laughs> so a total of 57 battery electric tractors were sold in the United States in the first months of 2022 making up only 0.02% of the total US tractor sales. So that means almost every single tractor is going to be either dependent on some kind of fossil fuels. A few of them can be adapted to run on old oil that's been used in fast food restaurants. Um, everything's going to be in short supply. So I assume the poor are going to starve. The rich will be okay. 
So, petrochemicals derived from oil and natural gas make the manufacturing of over 6,000 everyday products. I thought we could go through some of the products that we actually need petrochemicals for. Now, here's some uh, pictures. We have plasters, band-aids in America, I suppose, balloons, cell phones, big one here, solar panels. You're not going to be able to manufacture new solar panels and most of the solar panels in the world are manufactured in china using coal energy so again if you're going to phase out coal as well we're not going to have solar panels um <clears throat> the actual turbines on wind turbines are also manufactured using petrochemicals anyway you guys get the point right for all buildings globally, 62% of heating was supplied by fossil fuels in 2020, with the rest coming from biomass and modern renewables. So not only are you going to starve to death and you're going to have nothing to buy in the supermarkets, there won't even be supermarkets, you're also going to have to either freeze or boil because the air conditioning won't work. You're not going to have any heating in your house. Or if you are, you're going to have to chop down all the local trees, which um, I'm sure is going to make people lovely and happy. So you can expect all the forests to basically vanish very rapidly because people are going to have to burn something in the freezing cold winter, right? Can we stop oil? Not really. Unless you want to starve and freeze and like have barely any products. So I don't know if I need to go on or not. I don't think I do.